waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, trumpet earlier at about 7 a.m. Welcome to Hashtag BHVO 2013. Today on Rappler, Fort Barrow scam witness Ruby Twazon is in Los Angeles to sell property so she can return 40 million pesos in illegal commissions. Senator Alan Cayetano confirms he wants to be president but says the question is when. And Ukraine reaches out to Russia to resolve tensions between the two countries. Hello, I'm Ayi Makaraig sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The lawyer of pork barrel scam witness Ruby Twazon says she's in Los Angeles supposedly to secure funds so she can return the commissions she earned from the illegal transactions. Lawyer Dennis Manalo says Twazon is negotiating with people who are interested in buying her property in the Philippines. Manalo says Twazon coordinated with the Department of Justice or DOJ for her travel. He adds she left to attend to personal matters, foremost of which is to finance her commitment to return 40 million pesos to the government. She left Sunday but Manalo says Tuason is prepared to go back to the Philippines at any time she is called by the NBI, the DOJ or the Senate. He also denies Tuason is meeting with people linked to the pork barrel scam. Tuason was admitted provisionally under the DOJ Witness Protection Program after she promised to return a portion of what she received as bagman for Senators Jingoy Estrada and Juan Ponce Enriles transactions in the scam. But Justice Secretary Leila De Lima is furious at the release of reports about Tuason's whereabouts. I'm asking uh, Commissioner Mison to uh, require that spokesperson to... Uh, explain why uh, she makes such an announcement. I cannot be confirming that. That is a WPP matter. It's uh, covered by the confidentiality provision. But any such announcement by that spokesperson is not authorized. The Justice Department denies claims that pork barrel scam whistleblower Ben Hurlui is being influenced as a state witness to favor certain politicians linked to the scam. Louis fired Levy Baligod on Tuesday as his counsel in the cases related to the pork barrel scam. Rappler sources say Baligod's busy schedule and disagreements over strategy triggered the decision. An inquiry report quoted Baligod as saying, Someone wants to control Ben Hurlui. But Justice Secretary Leila De Lima says the protocol within the Witness Protection Program leaves no opportunity for politicians to access witnesses in their custody. Well, uh, uh, among, uh, let's say, uh, personalities or political personalities, whether opposition or administration, wala akong nakikialam sa amin sa pag-aalaga at sa pag-ahandle ng mga whistleblowers, including uh, ben Hur, kami lang yun, WPP, DOJ, NBI, walang iba nakikialam sa kanila. Ang, pag ang pagkaalam ko rin, wala sa kanila mga nakaka-access. Senate Majority Leader Alan Peter Cayetano confirms he wants to be president but adds he's still, he's still testing to see if 2016 is the best time. It is his boldest statement about his plans for the 2016 polls. Cayetano admits he even hired advertising veteran Greg Garcia in preparation. Garcia also produced ads for Vice President Jeju Marbinay, widely seen as the leading contender for the polls. Press about his plans in an interview on ANC Wednesday, Cayetano says, I don't want to run, I want to win. Cayetano also confirms a Rappler report that he will release ads in the coming weeks but says it's meant for his Presyo Trabajo Kita programs. The senator also says a crucial factor in his decision is whether or not his Nacionalista Party and the ruling Liberal Party will again join forces in 2016 as they did in the 2013 polls. Senator Cayetano challenges Vice President Jeju Marbinay to make a strong statement about his allies implicated in the pork barrel scam. 
Cayetano says it's not enough for Be Nice Ally, United Nationalist Alliance Secretary General Toby Chanco to say that the pork barrel scam case will proceed under a Be Nice administration. Be nice ally Senators Juan Ponce Enrile and Jingoy Estrada are respondents in the multi-billion peso corruption scandal where they allegedly funneled their pork barrel funds to fake NGOs in exchange for kickbacks. Cayetano says Binay should make a strong statement to quote show he has moral toughness even if his allies are involved. Cayetano also cites the statement of Binay's eldest daughter, Senator Nancy Binay, as an indication that the vice president might protect his allies. On Tuesday, Senator Binay said Estrada remains a possible running mate of her father even after he was implicated in the scam. In response, Cayetano says, You are courting a senator as a possible running mate. How can you prosecute someone you are courting? Malacanang questioned Senator Bong Revilla's challenge for President Benigno Aquino and his cabinet to subject themselves to a lifestyle check. Presidential spokesperson Edwin Lacerda says it's irrelevant. To our readers, agree. Brian J. agrees with Lacerda. He says irrelevant for admin to investigate themselves. Lifestyle check will only be relevant against the opposition. Albert Jan Santillana says, let he who has not sinned cast the first stone. Otherwise, this is just a prime example of the pot calling the kettle black. Nearly four months after Super Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan, the Philippine government gets only a fifth of the money the world promised. Rehabilitation Secretary Panfilo Laxon says the government will soon appoint quote, evangelists to follow up on the unfulfilled pledges. Government data show the Philippines received 648.18 million pesos or 13.34 million dollars out of 3.11 billion pesos or 69.11 million dollars pledged by other countries. We are uh, recruiting uh, quote unquote evangelists ano, para mag outreach do sa mga nagawa ng pledges pero hindi nagde deliver. Well, we cannot force them because they are they are donors in the first place. So we can just appeal to them to make good on their pledges. Ano? The Philippines needs at least 360.9 billion pesos for its biggest reconstruction effort since World War II. Fishermen from areas affected by Typhoon Yolanda lost most of their boats, affecting their livelihood. Months after they get back on track with new boats, with one major difference. Piera Nada reports. These fishing boats are about to be shipped to high and hit areas. They look like any other bangka, but instead of wood, they're made of fiberglass. Fishermen were among the worst hit by the typhoon, with many of them living near the sea. The journey of these boats start here in the warehouse of BP Technologies. These are mats of fiberglass. They are cut into strips the length of boats. Uh, we make the the molds here in Manila and prefab all of the materials here and then we send it to our different locations. Uh, currently we have uh, Bacolod in Indo, Ormok, Wing and Tacloban and uh, in next stop is actually Samar. To make a boat, a gel coat is sprayed on the mold, serving as the boat's outermost layer. On top of the gel coat, workers put layer upon layer of fiberglass mats, laminating them with resin. It is really fast. Uh, as I told you, we can make one boat per mold per day. So instead of uh, making it in the traditional way, wooden boats uh, that needs a week before you can make a boat, just one boat and plenty of guys to do it. Here, you just need 10 guys. In a week, you can make, what, 7 to 10 boats in a week. Fiberglass boats also save hardwood trees from being cut to replace thousands of boats Yolanda destroyed. The workers, many of them fishermen, vouch for the fiberglass boats. Randy Upsanga was once a fisherman in Mindoro. Yung kahoy po, ma madali pong masira. Tsaka, pag na, once na mas masira siya, mabutas, tapos mahirap yung repair. Eh, dry lang po ng kunti. Tapos, pag naalis yung gel coat or yung pintura, tsaka ililayer <laughs> naman po rin ang panibago. Aside from ready-made boats, the company ships building kits to make new boats. So far, the group has shipped 1,400 boats, but that hardly dents the demand for the fishing vessels. The, num the number of boats is like about 10,000 um, 10, boats in, in Iloilo. 
uh, 20,000 boats in, in um, Tacloban and uh, in the Samar area. So if we're only making about 1,400, uh, there is so much to do pa. After the layers are applied, they are dried in the sun. Rex Guadalupe, a fisherman turned boat maker from Bacolod, loosens up the dried layers. Bilang manyus da ma'am, dito ka kumukuha ng kit nung sa araw-araw mong ginagamit sa pamilya mo, dito ka kumukuha. At mahalaga to sa sayo kasi ito nga nakbuhay mo. The fiberglass boats show how technology can touch the lives of fishermen. In a day, a new fiberglass boat rolls out of the factory. Soon it will be a fisherman's second chance at a future. Piranada, Rappler, Manila. The annual Forbes tally of the world's richest includes a good number of female billionaires. Topping the list is Walmart's Christy Walton with a net worth of $36.7 billion. Her sister Alice is at number three at $34.3 billion. Steve Jobs' widow Lorene Powell Jobs inherited her husband's Apple and Disney shares worth $14 billion, putting her at number 10. Others on the list include Lillian Betancourt of L'Oreal and Jacqueline Mars of Mars Confectionery. Ukraine's interim Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk says his government made the first, quote, timid contacts with Russian leaders in a bid to resolve tensions between the two countries. This standoff continued Tuesday with both sides saying they don't want war over the Crimean Peninsula, a disputed region with Russia, which Russia ceded to Ukraine in 1954. Ukraine's UN Ambassador Yuri Sergeyev says Russia sent 16,000 troops into Crimea, but Russian President Vladimir Vladimir Putin denies this. Although Putin says his military does not plan to seize Crimea, he says if Russian troops intervene, it will be legitimate. Putin adds, we have a direct request from a legitimate president, and it corresponds to our interests in protecting people who are close to us. But Ukraine's Petro Poroshenko says, ousted President Viktor Yanukovych has lost legitimacy. Poroshenko adds, Yanukovych's political tenure is finished, and he is a criminal, especially after yesterday's appeal to have foreign troops come here and start a war. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 7, New Zealand's Maori King Tuheta Paki declines to meet with the United Kingdom's Prince William during his visit to the country in April. The office of the king says he's, quote, not a carnival act and criticizes those who organize the trip because of the inflexible terms. The visiting royalty complained of being given only 19 minutes with the prince. King Tuhecha is descended from the first Maori king appointed in 1858. He does not have any constitutional status or legal powers in New Zealand, but he carries symbolic importance for some Maori. At number 9. John Travolta's blunder during the Oscars sparks a new internet star. Travolta mispronounced Broadway star Edina Menzel's name, introducing her as Adele Dazim. The internet was rife with memes and jokes about Travolta's oops moment. Travolta himself says he had beaten himself up about it, but the real Edina Menzel would simply say, let it go. And at number 10. Tech giant Apple launches CarPlay, its new integration setup for iOS in car dashboards. Apple says CarPlay is designed from the ground up to provide drivers with an incredible experience in using their iPhones in the car. CarPlay uses existing Apple technology like voice recognition and digital assistant app Siri and Apple's Maps. The first car to support CarPlay will make its debut at the Geneva Motor Show this week from Ferrari, Mercedes-Benz, and Volvo. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that got the most clicks. Today's mood navigator has mostly political stories. Why, Lu why Louis dropped Baligod as council? It has 35% of readers feeling afraid, 22% sad. 
the line of the day. Cayetano, I don't want to run. I want to win. 64% of readers are happy, 20% annoyed. The story that got the most votes, Enrile, his wife Cristina, and his affair with Gigi Reyes, from yesterday's amused, it's now 37% annoyed, 31% amused. All contributing to the mood of the day today, most people are annoyed. That's Rappler Snoozecast for today, Wednesday, March 5th, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch your newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Ayi Makaraigin as you say at Rappler. Tomorrow begins today.